Yee-haw! Hi, everybody. Welcome to Reading with Mrs. Degagne. Today, we're going to the Wild West. I'm going to tell you a tall tale about some cattlemen. This is The Toughest Cowboy at, or How the Wild West Was Tamed. It's by John Frank and illustrated by Zachary Pullen. Grizz Brickbottom was the toughest cowboy to ever drive a herd of cattle across the open range. He drank a quart of Tabasco sauce a day, flossed his teeth with barbed wire, and kept a rattlesnake in his bedroll to cool his feet at night. Grizz was so tough he could grind a branding iron into a belt buckle with the stubble on his chin. One evening after a cattle drive, Grizz and his cowboy buddies were finishing a hearty supper of fried boots and lizard gizzards. Grizz's buddy Chuck Wagon, the cowboy's cook, picked up his guitar and began to strum. After a long day on the dusty trail, Grizz reckoned a good song would be like a breath of fresh air. So he set down his tin plate, fetched a spur to scrape the gnats out of his nostrils, and sat back against a cactus to relax and have himself a listen. Oh, how I miss my one true love. Oh, how I miss that silky hair, that lovely smell, those kisses so sweet. As Grizz listened to Chuck Wagon's lonesome song and watched the other cowboys wiping their mouths on their sleeves and digging at their teeth with their fingernails, he began to realize something was missing in his life. He needed another kind of companionship. Someone with silky hair. Someone with a lovely smell. Someone who would give him lots of sweet kisses. He needed a dog. Grizz jumped up, feeling ornery as a bull with a blow fly in his ear. He snatched his plate off the ground and hurled it into the air. It spun across the sky and disappeared into the desert dusk. Chuck Wagon stopped singing and everyone turned to stare at Grizz. What's eating you, Grizz? asked Lariat, the fastest rope in the Wild West. It's time we had some new company round here, said Grizz. The campfire crackled and a spark leaped into the air. Lariat grabbed a rope tied the end into a tiny noose, swung the rope over the flames, and lassoed the spark before it could hit the ground. What's wrong with the company you already got? he asked. You got no upbringing. That's what's wrong, said Grizz. You ain't had a bath in six months. You never heard of a napkin, and you use your fingers to clean your teeth and pick your noses. Didn't know I had more than one nose, said Lariat. Yours ain't the only one I'm talking about, said Grizz. All you buckaroos have got the same bad habits, and it's high time we hitched up with someone who don't. Like who? asked Lariat. Like a dog, say. A dog, bellowed Bald Mountain, the biggest bronco buster this side of the Rockies. Are you saying a dog acts better than us? Bald Mountain stood up, tall as a house, and glared down at Grizz. That's just what I'm saying, said Grizz. Now that ain't fair, Grizz, interrupted Chuck Wagon. A dog ain't got any fingers to pick his nose with. Besides, if I didn't pick my nose while fixing supper, I couldn't smell when the food was done cooking. It's not the point, said Grizz. As much as I'd rather you stuck to picking your guitar, Chuck Wagon, the fact is all of us here are set in our ways. You can't teach an old cowpoke new tricks, but a dog, that's another story. In no time at all, a good dog will be behaving just the way you want him to, herding cattle, chasing off bobcats and mountain lions, taking regular baths. Yeah, well, what if he gets tired of herding cattle and chasing mountain lions, grumbled Ball Mountain. Then he can ride up front with me, just me and, me and, well, I ain't thought of what to call him yet. Chuck Wagon strummed a worried chord on the guitar. I don't know, Grizz, he said. A horse with a dog on it? That ain't such a bad name, said Grizz. I'll call him Dog on it. 
Soon after that, Grizz must have rubbed up against a lucky horseshoe because the next time he was by himself in town, he spotted a sign posted outside the saloon. Going out of business, moving back east, free dog to good home. Grizz pushed his way through the saloon swinging doors, imagining his sleek, strong, cattle-herding bobcat-chasing companion to be. Wouldn't his cowboy buddies be surprised when he rode back into camp with a miniature poodle? Chuck Wagon stomped his boot on the ground. Doggone it! The poodle scampered over to Chuck Wagon, wagging its tail. Well, at least he's smart, said Lariat. He already is learning his name. Afraid she's already got a name, said Grizz. It's Foofy. Foofy, exclaimed Chuck Wagon, Lariat, and Bald Mountain all at once. That's right, and she's going to need some special looking after. Grizz pulled the bowl out of his saddlebag. Word is she's a picky eater, so Chuck Wagon, you'll be in charge of fixing her meals. Grizz handed Chuck Wagon the bowl. I've been told she's partial to French cooking. I've got to cook for a dog, said Chuck Wagon, and keep your guitar tuned said Grizz, because she needs to be sung to sleep in that. But not before someone takes care of her hair, he added, reaching into the bag and taking out a brush. That'll be your job, Bald Mountain. My job, roared Bald Mountain, and he threw his hat down into the dirt. Bald Mountain may have been as tall as a house, but without his hat on, he didn't have much of a roof on top. I don't know how to use a hairbrush. And when you're done, continued Grizz, she'll need to have these ribbons tied behind her ears. That'll be your department, Lariat. Ribbon, said Lariat. My specialty is tying ropes, Grizz. Then you can make her a new leash once you're finished. In the meanwhile, I've got some cattle herding to teach. Come on, Foofy. Grizz headed off with Foofy at his side. Chuck Wagon, Bald Mountain, and Lariat stood there with their arms crossed, sour as unripe prickly pears. That dog can fix her own dang meal, said Chuck Wagon. And comb her own dang hair, said Bald Mountain. And tie her own dang ribbons, said Lariat. Come back here, Foofy, yelled Grizz from the distance. A dang cow ain't gonna hurt you. A short time later, Grizz came back, dragging his heels. Foofy patting behind. This dog just ain't of a mind to herd cattle, he said. Nothing to fret over, though. After supper, I'm going to teach her to chase mountain lions. As Grizz fetched a tin plate, a mouse popped out of a hole in the ground and scurried past Foofy. Foofy let out a whimper, then ran and hid behind Ball Mountain. Better be a pretty small mountain lion, said Larry Apple. Fooey, Foofy, said Grizz. I took a big gamble bringing you out here on the range. Grizz hurled the supper plate in disgust. It spun across the sky, level as a silver dollar on a poker table. Suddenly, quick as a jackrabbit, Foofy took off after the plate. And as the plate glided down in the far distance, ready to hit the ground, she caught it in her mouth. Foofy came trotting back with the plate and dropped it at Grizz's feet. Bald Mountain dropped his jaw. Lariat dropped his rope. Chuck Wagon dropped his finger from his nose. Well, I'll be dipped in horse droppings, said Grizz. Before you could say, don't squat with your spurs on, the cowboys were jostling to toss a tin plate for Foofy, and soon they were throwing the plate to each other, too. By sundown, they were having more fun than a youngin of a wrangler at his first rodeo. Finally, after Bald Mountain heaved the plate so far that it looked as if it might knock the evening star right out of the sky, Chuck Wagon said, Why, Foofy ain't even been fed yet. I'm going to cook her the finest supper that's ever been made. And when she's ready for bed, I'm going to sing her the sweetest lullaby that's ever been sung. But not before I've brushed her hair, boom bald mountain. All this running has mussed it up. And Lariat said, 
Just make sure you do a good job of it, Bold Mountain, because I wanted that hair sh shining like silk when I tie my ribbons in it. As the days passed, the cowboys continued to take care of Foofy. They fed her and sang to her and brushed her hair and tied it with ribbons and gave her regular baths. They became so fond of the smell of soap that they even moved to town just so they could take regular warm baths themselves. While there, Chuck Wagon opened a gourmet restaurant, one with tablecloths and linen napkins, and sang to the customers when he wasn't busy in the kitchen. And Bald Mountain, well, he became the town's first professional hairdresser. Laria opened a gift shop where he sold rope holders for hanging potted plants and charged extra for wrapping presents with fancy bows. And as for Grizz, he started a business manufacturing his own flying plates. He branded his first name and last initial on the bottom of each one, Grizz B. And before long, folks were lining up all across the frontier to buy his product. Over the years, Grizz became so rich selling Grizz Bees that he was able to retire from being the Wild West's toughest cowboy. But sometimes, he still liked to drive cattle across the open range. I like that story. I like to talk like this, but I also like it because it is a funny little tale. And it's amazing what the difference that a little doggy could do for their lives. So on that note, I'm gonna think about, hmm, what if I had a dog? Ooh, that might be fun. All right, take care. See you next time on Reading with Mrs. DeGagne. Bye.